Alright, so so much has happened over the weekend. In this video, we're going to get into why LGBTQ fans have slammed Beyonce, the reason that the new Amy Winehouse biopic is so controversial, and why the NYPD is recording anyone who went to Drake's concert. First off, Beyonce has returned to the stage for her first live performance in five years, which seems like it would be a good thing, but it's actually left fans divided. To give you some background, her most recent album was labeled as a celebration of queer culture and made in collaboration with some of the LGBTQ community's biggest names. It pays tribute to dance music that emerged out of that community and also references 1800s drag ballrooms in Harlem, New York. So when the location for Beyonce's long-awaited concert was revealed, it did not sit well with some of her fans. She was reportedly paid around $25 million to perform at the star-studded private launch event for Dubai's Hotel Atlantis, the Royal, on Saturday. Despite a strict no-phones policy, put Footage of the performance has now flooded the internet, and there's no other way to say it, it looks spectacular. At one point, Beyonce was propelled 16 feet into the air in the middle of the hotel's sky blaze fountain while it breathed fire around her. Violinists crowned with metallic gold headpieces and red skirts hit the stage first. Queen Bee was raised up on a platform wearing a yellow corseted dress topped with a feathered skirt and a feathered black piece. The performance lasted an hour and she performed 19 songs, including the the first live performance of Brown Skin Girl, along with her 11 year old daughter Blue Ivy. While many fans rejoiced at Beyonce's return to the stage, others pointed out the hypocrisy of performing in the United Arab Emirates, where same sex relationships are illegal and punishable by imprisonment or death. Freelance music journalist Abigail Firth spoke to the BBC Newsbeat about the controversy and pointed to the fact that Beyonce's recent work is indebted to the LGBT culture. She said, It seems like it's a really misguided choice from her. She's obviously a multi-millionaire already. She didn't really need to do this. She didn't really need the money. That's probably where some of the backlash is stemming from as well. Bev Jackson, co-founder of the British advocacy group LGB Alliance, spoke to The Telegraph and said that the performance casts a shadow over her support for lesbians and gay people. She said, Beyonce is a huge icon for many gay people. LGB Alliance is deeply disappointed that Beyonce has agreed to give a lucrative concert in Dubai, where same sex acts are a criminal offense, potentially punishable by death. Across the internet, it seems like fans are super divided over the performance. ID editor Douglas Greenwood posted a viral tweet saying, no beef, but I'm struggling to understand why Beyonce, who has half a billion dollars, would accept $20 million to make her debut performance of the Renaissance album, a record which lifts heavily from queer culture. In Dubai, a country where LGBT rights aren't recognized. Even Kitty Scott Claus from RuPaul's Drag Race UK made it clear that she doesn't support the decision. She tweeted, Can someone explain why everyone was cancelling David Beckham the other month, but now celebrating Beyonce for performing in Dubai? One rule for one and one for another. To give you some background, David Beckham received an onslaught of criticism for promoting the World Cup in Qatar, something that he was paid $241 million for. But when it comes to Beyonce, she is far from the only megastar to have ever performed in Dubai. There's also Lady Gaga, Madonna, Elton John, and Kylie Minogue, and all of them are gay icons. So that was definitely surprising. In fact, one of the only celebrities who openly refused to follow suit was Dua Lipa. She spoke about the decision not to perform at the World Cup and posted an Instagram story where she said, there is a lot of speculation that I will be performing at the opening ceremony of the World Cup in Qatar. I will not be performing, nor have I ever been involved in any negotiation to perform. I look forward to visiting Qatar when it has fulfilled all the human rights pledges it made when it won the right to host the World Cup. The country has also been criticized for its stance on same-sex relationships, its human rights record, and its treatment of migrant workers. In an attempt to address worldwide criticism, Qatar has made several promises in the past to investigate certain matters and to improve its record, but many people still feel that they continue to fall short time and time again. But despite the backlash, many other stars agreed to take part in the World Cup, like the Black Eyed Peas, Shakira, and Robbie Williams. So clearly there will always be singers willing to perform in those countries, and some even see it as an opportunity to promote a message of global unity. Although let's be real, at the end of the day, they're also getting a massive paycheck. And for most 
most celebrities, that's all the reason they really need. Moving on, did you know that they're making a movie about Amy Winehouse? But now that the first pictures have been released, the reactions are not exactly positive. In fact, it's said to be one of the most controversial biopics since Blonde, as fans have accused the project of exploiting the singer's legacy and capitalizing off her trauma. Last year, it was announced that Sam Taylor Johnson would direct the Amy Winehouse biopic titled Back to Black. The project started shooting in London earlier this month. So who is going to be playing Amy? Well, you might recognize her from the hit TV series Industry. It's actress Marissa Abella. And so far, we've seen pictures of her wearing the lead singer's trademark black beehive and gold hoop earrings. Other photos that were released from filming have given a glimpse at the biopic, with one scene showing Marissa transformed into Amy as she sobs hysterically while recreating her husband, Blake Field the Civil's arrest. Although there is some controversy over the fact that Marissa doesn't exactly look like Amy. The singer's father has come out showing his support for the actress and said that she's a great choice for the role, even if she doesn't look exactly like his late daughter. He told TMZ, Marissa is Marissa and Amy is Amy, so it's no big deal if they aren't mirror images. He added that plenty of actors don't look like who they are playing, and that Eddie Marson, who will play Mitch, isn't an exact match for his appearance either. So there you have it, it's pretty obvious that he approves of the project. But not everyone who knew Amy is happy about it. Ever since the announcement was made, friends of the singer have come out condemning the filmmakers for failing to consult them about her life. They claim that executives working on Back to Black have not been in touch to ask about their memories of her, and that has only raised more fears that the film will be inaccurate. Quote, nobody consulted us about Amy. How can it be authentic and accurate if they don't know the real Amy or the truth about what happened in her final years? We are against this and we are upset. Amy was absolutely striking. One of her friends spoke to the mail and said that they also disliked the casting of Marissa because they just don't see the resemblance to the singer. The reaction on Twitter was not much better. One user wrote, this is not a great start. Can we please leave the deceased alone? More often than not, these biopics are a mess and exploitative. Many fans also pointed out that they won't support the film at all because they believe it would feature Amy's suffering when she was still alive and that people should just let her rest. Another user wrote, I feel very protective over Amy Winehouse's memory, and my gut instinct is to rebuke this biopic. I think most of her fans just wanted her to rest in peace without anyone sensationalizing or exploiting her legacy. The Amy doc is all we need. Another person wrote, I'm frustrated and confused as to why we need this biopic about Amy Winehouse. She had such traumatic time in the spotlight, and it feels gross to capitalize off of that. Why can't we just let her rest? Remember her through her music. And to sum it up, someone tweeted, I am going to whoever signed off on that Amy Winehouse biopic. So yes, there has been a lot of backlash and it's only going to get more intense as production goes on. Now, here's what we do know about the movie. Back to Black will chronicle Amy's time living in London in the early 2000s, as well as her rise to fame. The film was written by Matt Greenhalg, who wrote the script for the 2009 John Lennon biopic, Nowhere Boy. So that's a good sign. Not to mention the fact that Back to Black has been authorized by the Amy Winehouse estate, whereas the 2015 documentary Amy wasn't. Director Sam Taylor Johnson said she is fully aware of the responsibility of bringing this film to life and said that she will endeavor to create a movie that we will all love and cherish forever, just like we do with Amy. Despite it being almost 12 years since she died from alcohol poisoning at the age of 27, many people still believe that it's too early for a biopic to be made about Amy. So do you think that this movie can be made respectfully or it shouldn't be made at all? And now let's talk about the insanity that was happening at Drake's concert. Over the weekend, he performed at the Apollo Theater in Harlem and fans were so excited, one of them literally fell off the second floor balcony. A video posted on Twitter shows the exact moment that it happened, where well, you can see the guy on the left side of the camera crash into the people on the first floor. According to Insider, crew members then rushed over to the artist to let him know what was happening. Drake then stopped the show entirely to make sure those involved were okay. The lights were turned on for safety, and one light that was hanging under the balcony was knocked out of place from the incident. The production staff worked quickly to fix it, and when it was clear that everyone was all right and no no one was injured, the show continued. This was on the second night of the performance. But even crazier than that incident was the fact that there was a heavy 
police presence outside the venue. In fact, dozens of officers could be seen videotaping everyone who exited the doors. Someone posted a video on Twitter and people were shocked at the amount of police. Many started speculating why they were shamelessly recording everyone who came out of the concert. One user wrote, I mean, obviously it's racism. But I guess the slightly better question is WTF is their excuse? The best question is how do we move effectively towards defunding the NYPD ASAP? Another person wrote, do they do that at Taylor Swift concerts? And maybe they're trying to build a database of people with terrible taste in music. Okay, that last tweet sounded personal, but really, I mean, what are they doing? The general consensus seems to be that the NYPD are scanning faces for AI recognition. And this of course is legal, considering that there is no law against involuntary biometric scanning. But why a Drake concert of all places? Places. Some social media users claim that police organizations are now using facial recognition technology as a new way of keeping tabs on people, specifically people of color. This is really troubling if it's true. And if you look at the video, one of the officers recording seems to be smirking as if they know it would make everyone feel uncomfortable. There's obviously something that's meant to be intimidating about it, but even generally speaking, no one would enjoy being recorded like that without their permission. So it's interesting to see if there will be any more instances of this happening. Apart from that controversy, Drake's concert was said to be incredible as it was a packed out theatre. It paid tribute to so many of his popular songs as far back as the ones from his first album. According to TMZ, Drake was supposed to perform at the Apollo back in November, but he postponed the concert because he was mourning the death of Takeoff, who was a third member of the hip hop trio Migos, and was killed in an incident involving firearms that same month. Drake's concert was then rescheduled for December the 6th and 7th, but that had to be pushed back because of production issues. After the performance, Drake said, I wanted to make sure this show is about gratitude. This was a little story that we put together. My deep love for my family, my dear friends, and for each and every one of you that have been supporting me for a long time. We don't need to say how long, it's gonna make it sound like we're all getting old. He wanted to say that he was grateful to be in this position and compared his run to a kind of lightning strike. Well, that's everything that we have in the news for today. Please let me know what you think in the comments below and I'll catch you in the next video. Thank you.